In this video, I'll be creating a very simple FM synthesizer. FM is really great at creating a wide variety of sounds that would otherwise be very difficult to synthesize. And in particular, it's good at creating metallic sounds like you might hear in a bell or mallet instrument. I'll also take a look at the LFO module and show how we can use that to modulate various parameters in our synth. So to begin with, I want to add a couple of oscillators to our structure here. And we're actually going to ignore the mixer section altogether and we're going to send one of our oscillators directly into a filter. And we'll take the output of the filter and route it into a voltage controlled amplifier like we've done in the past. And the VCA will connect directly to our speakers. So from VCA to the speakers, from filter to the VCA, and from our second oscillator here into our filter. And then we want our first oscillator to be routed into the FM input of our second oscillator. So take the output and route it to the FM. Then I'll turn up the amount of FM here so we don't forget about that. So basically, um, our two oscillators here are... Uh, only one of them is being sent on to the rest of the synth. And then the first one is only being used to modulate the frequency of the second one. So the first oscillator in FM parlance would be called the modulator oscillator. And the second oscillator that's being modulated is referred to as the carrier module, or carrier oscillator. Of course, we're going to need some more stuff to turn this into a full fledged synth. So let's hop to the utility folder and I'll grab the note in module. And we're going to route the pitch from this into both of our oscillators and into the um, state variable filter as well. I'll turn up the amount of key tracking on the filter. And then we're going to want a couple of envelopes as well. So I'll grab those from the bento box folder. The envelopes are both going to be triggered by the MIDI note inputs. And the output of our envelope, of our first envelope, is going to control the cutoff of our state variable filter. So I'll route it to the A modulator here. And the second envelope I'll route to the A input of the voltage controlled amplifier. Now let's turn down the cutoff on our filter and turn up the amount of modulation from the A input and turn up the amount of modulation for our level knob as well. And at this point in time, we have a very basic FM synthesizer set up. I typically like to use sine waves um, for most of my FM sounds. And the reason for that is that when you perform FM on a signal, for every harmonic that that signal has, each one of those harmonics breaks down and becomes several other harmonics. And uh, if you have a signal that already has a lot of harmonics, then things can get really chaotic really quick because you're just adding a bunch of more harmonics to your signal. When you work with a sine wave, it's a lot easier because sine waves only have one harmonic at the fundamental frequency. And so it's just an easier way to create a signal that doesn't get crazy and chaotic all at once. So at this point in time, if I change the shape of my decay sections, turn up the decay a bit, for both of these envelopes and then turn the sustain all the way down, then we should get something kind of close to a mallet instrument 
and we can kind of fine tune the sound by offsetting the MIDI pitches or the uh, semitone parameters on our oscillators. All right, so we're getting uh, kind of a much more metallic sound than we would normally be able to get out of a sine wave here. And of course, FM synthesizers will often use a lot of oscillators. Only two is a fairly weak setup, to be honest. And you can add as many oscillators to this as you would like. And there's a variety of different ways that things can be wired together. A very easy way, very common and easy way, would be to add another oscillator. And this oscillator is going to be affecting the FM of our modulator. And then our modulator going on to affect the FM of our carrier. And so it's just kind of creating a string of oscillators that are affecting the FM of the next oscillator in line. So we could offset this by an octave or whatever. And of course we want to take the pitch from our note in module as well here. Alright, so this is just a whole range of sounds that would be basically impossible to synthesize uh, using normal methods. And I just want to mention here that there's no reason why you couldn't add this kind of FM setup to the subtractive synth that we were working on previously. And in fact, you know, hybrid subtractive slash FM synths do exist. Um, Operator by Ableton is a good example. Uh, you can set up the four oscillators that Operator has in a variety of different ways where they can all affect each other's FM or you can just use them as four completely independent oscillators and use it just like a subtractive synth. So um, there's a lot of possibility there. The next thing I wanted to look at really quickly is just to show off the LFO module, which is kind of one of the very common building blocks of an oscillator that, or of a synthesizer that we haven't looked at yet. So the LFO is right beneath the envelope here in the middle of the bento box folder. And it's fairly easy to wire up. Uh, you typically want to connect the reset input to the gate value from our note in module and that's just going to restart the LFO whenever you press a new note so that you're always getting the same sound out of it. Uh, it's not necessary to make that connection if you want to have the LFO running free and kind of being more of a random value. And we can connect this to control any parameter on our synthesizer the same way that we are using the envelopes. So we could simply route it into uh, the A or B inputs of any of our modules and then turn up the modulation. So for example, if we wanted to add a vibrato effect to our oscillator, uh, we could simply route the LFO to the A input of that oscillator, and you'll see it going up and down here out in the LED, and we can click the A button and turn up the amount of modulation, and you'll see the uh, frequency or the pitch of our oscillator is being modulated by the LFO sounds super weird.
Alright, so we can use the LFO to modulate anything, and this is going to create a, a lot of possibilities for us. Alright, thank you guys for watching. In the next video, we're going to be taking a look at the sequencer modules, and I'll show how we can create a sequenced synthesizer. Thank you.